Laudato Jesus Christus, Vatican and World News. In the headlines this Thursday, the 29th of April, Pope Francis expresses his desire to visit Venezuela in a message to bishops on the eve of the beatification of José Gregorio Hernández Cisneros. A Catholic diocese in India turns its facilities into temporary COVID-19 hospitals as the nation buckles under a raging second wave of the pandemic. And violence erupts in Chad as citizens demand a return to civilian rule. In the Vatican, I'm Linda Bordoni. Pope Francis on Thursday sent a video message to the bishops and people of Venezuela to mark the beatification of Venezuelan physician Dr. José Gregorio Hernández Cisneros. The beatification ceremony will take place on the 30th of April in Caracas. As Lydia O'Kane reports in the message, the Pope also expressed his desire to visit the country. On the eve of the beatification of Venezuelan physician Dr. José Gregorio Hernández Cisneros, Pope Francis issued a video message to the bishops and people of Venezuela describing him as a model of personal goodness and civic and religious virtues. Dr. Hernández was known as the doctor of the poor, and through his studies in Paris, Berlin, Madrid and New York, he became a renowned bacteriologist. He died in 1919 in Caracas following a car accident. In his video message, Pope Francis said the church was only confirming something that the people of Venezuela already believed, that the people's doctor stands by God and that together with Our Lady of Coromoto, he intercedes for his compatriots and for all of us. Pope Francis described Dr. José Gregorio as an example of a believing disciple of Christ who made the gospel the criterion of his life and was a model of modesty and humility. One of the most relevant and fascinating aspects of his personality, remarked the Pope, was his service to citizens. The Pope noted that the beatification of Dr. José Gregorio takes place at a particular and difficult time for people in Venezuela. He highlighted the suffering aggravated by the COVID-19 pandemic and said he was especially mindful of the many dead, the many infected by the coronavirus who have paid with their lives to perform their duties in precarious conditions. Acknowledging that there would be restrictions in place that would affect this great feast of faith of beatification, the Pope underlines that nonetheless it would be a celebration all the same. In his message, Pope Francis also called to mind all those who have left the country in search of better living conditions and also those who are deprived of their freedom and those who lack the necessities of life. You are all all fellow citizens of the Blessed One, all of you, and you all have the same rights. I accompany you with love, he said. In the midst of all these current difficulties, Pope Francis invited the people of Venezuela to follow this physician's admirable example of selfless service to others. Concluding his video message, Pope Francis prayed to God for reconciliation and peace among Venezuelans and said he would like to visit the country. The Pope also prayed that God would inspire everyone, including religious, political and business leaders, to make a serious commitment to achieving unity and work for a better future for all. I'm Lydia O'Kane. And Pope Francis has expressed his closeness to the family and community of Nadia de Munari, an Italian lay missionary serving in Peru who was brutally attacked last week and who died of her wounds. Francesca Merlo has more. Pope Francis has sent a telegram for the death of Nadia de Munari, an Italian lay missionary of Operation Mato Grosso, who died last Saturday after suffering a violent attack on Tuesday night. Nadia was attacked in her room at the Mamma Mia educational center she ran in Nuevo Chimbote in Peru. Pope Francis's telegram was sent on Tuesday as the community gathers for Nadia's funeral, signed by the Cardinal Secretary of State Pietro Parolin and addressed to the Bishop of Chimbote through the Apostolic Nuncio in Peru. The Pope's telegram reiterated his firmest disapproval for this new and unjustifiable episode of violence, which is added to the many others in which missionaries have lost their lives while performing with self-denial their services to the gospel and assistance to the most needy and defenseless. While offering prayers for the eternal repose of the soul of this volunteer and entrusting her to the intercession of the Mother of God, the Pope expressed in the telegram, paternal closenesses to her parents, family members and relatives, assuring his remembrance in prayer and his blessings on all those who will participate in the funeral, both in Peru and as soon as possible in Italy. The funeral was presided over by Bishop Angel Francisco Simon Piorno of Chimbote, the Peruvian coastal city, where the 50-year-old volunteer from Vincenza in Italy worked. 
She ran five kindergartens and an elementary school, a service beneficial to more than 500 children from the shanty town of Nuevo Chimbote, which welcomes migrants in search of a living who came down from the very poor villages of the Andes in what the local people called an invasion. All the Italian missionary priests of NGOs present in Peru and many others can celebrate it. Many children assisted by the missionary were also present. The days seem long for Nadia's family and community as they await for clearance for her body to be returned to Schio in Italy, where Nadia was born. They wait in order to be able to give Nadia her last earthly farewell and burial after she spent more than half of her life in Latin America at the service of those in need. I'm Francesca Merlo. As India's healthcare system continues to reel under a raging second wave of COVID-19 infections, a southern Indian Catholic diocese has decided to make its facilities available as temporary hospitals for patients affected by the virus. Archbishop Peter Machado of Bangalore has promoted the initiative after noting that public and private systems are on the verge of collapse, with acute shortages in beds, ICUs, oxygen and medicines. Robin Gomes reports. India on Thursday set another grim record as millions in West Bengal state voted despite surging in infections and the nation prepared to bring its vaccination rollout to all adults amid snags. The health ministry reported a record 379,257 new infections over the past 24 hours, taking the total to more than 18.3 million, second only to the United States. With 3,645 fresh deaths, the total has risen to 204,832. However, experts say the actual figures are much higher as government reports are highly underreported. Our initiative to make school facilities available can help alleviate the stress on hospitals in managing the health crisis in the country, Archbishop Peter Machado of Bangalore explained to Vatican's Fides News Agency. While expressing appreciation and support for the healthcare workers, both Catholic and non-Catholic, the Archbishop said the Church wants to offer every help and support possible. The Archdiocese, as well as the network of Catholic hospitals, have also launched a telephone helpline to reach out to the victims and their relatives, providing information on the management of the disease and the availability of beds and oxygen. Archbishop Machado explained that those in need of special care will be directed to any of the temporary COVID assistance centers set up by the Archdiocese, thus taking pressure off the hospitals. The Archdiocese has allotted a school for each hospital in order to set up a post-COVID care center. Karnataka State is under lockdown from from April 27th to May the 12th to contain the spread of the virus. The state on Wednesday reported another single-day record spike in fresh COVID-19 cases with 39,047 new infections, taking the total close to 1.44 million. With 229 new deaths, the total has crossed the 15,000 mark. Its capital, Bangalore, also notched up new highs. I am Robin Gomes. Meanwhile, people in the Indian state of West Bengal are voting in the final phase of elections despite the soaring COVID cases. Long queues were seen outside polling booths, raising concerns about further spread of the virus amidst the second deadly wave. West Bengal has already seen seven phases of voting. It's one of the few where Prime Minister Narendra Modi does not have a majority of parliamentary seats. There has been a lot of criticism that he continued to hold large rallies there even as the virus began overwhelming the country. And members of the Standing Committee of IMBISA, the interregional meeting of the bishops of Southern Africa, this week ended a meeting to reflect upon and assess the socio-political and ecclesial situation of their region. Speaking to Vatican Radio, Director of IMBISA, Father Domizani Villacasi, says the bishops met in person for the first time since the start of the coronavirus pandemic and focused on some of the serious situations of violence and suffering on the African continent, including the volatile situation in Mozambique's Cabo del Gabo province and of the church's engagement in local realities. Clearly, the, the youth are at the center, probably at the center of the discussions of the bishops here. Since the last synod, we have not really done much. Well, we've done something, but not much in terms of assisting our youth so that they can have a better future, notwithstanding the challenges that have been visited by us to, uh, on us by the pandemic. 
Because what is happening, as it was ably indicated today here, is that in a country like Mozambique, with many young people not working, they are simply happy to join these insurgents because they get a bit of money out of that because they are do not doing anything anyway. It's a similar thing also which is probably happening in the Lunda North province of Angola because uh, even the young people who are dissatisfied about developments in the area, they see resources but the resources don't benefit them and then it's easy to just invite them so that they take up arms. So young people are vulnerable in this sense. It's important, therefore, maybe for a church in the region to come up with better strategies on how they can minister better to youth, which has not happened before, I mean, for the region just to start thinking about youth or only youth. No, it hasn't happened. Many things have been considered like uh, Laudato Si, abuse, uh, family, and all sorts of other things. But youth as youth probably is an area that has not received the required attention. And that was the director of Imbisa, Father Domizani Villacasi, speaking there to Vatican Radio. Chad's tra transitional military government is facing protests as citizens demand a return to civilian rule after a military council took control of the country following the sudden death of President Idris Debi Itno this month. Father Benedict Mayaki reports. At least five people have been killed and several dozens injured in Chad in protests demanding the country's transitional military government transfer power back to civilians. Tensions have been mounting in Chad since the death of President Idris Debi Itno on the 19th of April while he was visiting troops fighting rebels north of the capital in Jamena. Following President Idris Debi's death, a military council headed by his son, Mohammed Debi, took control of the country, drawing immediate criticism from political opponents. The military council has said that it will oversee an 18-month transition to elections. On Tuesday, defying a ban on protests imposed by the military council during a period of national mourning for the late president, demonstrators swarmed the streets carrying signs demanding a transition to civilian rule. Security forces were deployed to maintain order and limit material damage. Trucks loaded with soldiers patrolled the streets of central Njamena and tear gas was used to disperse groups of demonstrators, some of whom burned tires on the streets. Amid the power transition, Chad's transitional military council has been coming under international pressure from several quarters. In a statement released on the 22nd of April, the Peace and Security Council of the African Union expressed grave concern with respect to the establishment of the military transitional council and urged Chadian defense and security forces to respect the constitutional mandate and order and to expeditiously embark on a process of restoration of constitutional order. The AU also urged them to create conducive conditions for a swift, peaceful and constitutional transition. France, the former colonial ruler of Chad, condemned on Tuesday the crackdown on protesters during the demonstrations. French President Emmanuel Macron said that he remained in favor of a peaceful transition and that France would collaborate with international partners to improve the situation in the country. Meanwhile, Mohamed Debi, in his first official address as the new military transitional ruler, said that the council was set up to face the absolute urgency of defending the nation and ensuring the continuity of the state. He also promised inclusive national dialogue and assured the nation's allies that Chad would maintain its responsibilities in the fight against extremism and respect all of his international commitments. I'm Father Benedict Mayaki. And that's all for this edition of Vatican and World News. My thanks go to Gustavo Messina in studio in the Vatican. I'm Linda Bordoni. Bye-bye. <laughs>